Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Steve received worrisome news regarding Clyde's. Brady invited Ava to sit with him at a table in Horton Town Square. He acknowledged that he still felt bad for straying from the path, and she congratulated him on his release from prison. He said that Kristen had purchased a new vehicle for him. Ava smiled and inquired as to whether Kristen had used the gesture as a means of reconciling with Brady. He expressed skepticism about Kristen's assertion that she had wished to compensate him for the loss of his former vehicle. Brady said that by allowing him to spend more time with Rachel, Kristen had been trying. Although she was pleased for him, Ava was taken aback by Kristen's unexpected generosity of spirit. Kristen might be able to help Sarah walk again, Brady suggested. Ava seemed to turn a fresh leaf as she raised a glass to Kristen, saying, Wonders never cease. Brady quipped that his illustrious love life had been no secret as Ava reflected on the other interesting women who had been in his life. Both of them agreed that Fiona had been a monster when Ava brought up Brady's recent relationship with her. Ava mentioned a waitress at the bistro who had dealt with Fiona, and she subtly implied that Fiona had been a good tipper. To Brady's amazement, the waitress in question turned out to be Sophia. Ava informed Brady about Sophia's obsession on Tate, and he informed Ava that Tate had escorted Sophia to prom. Ava hoped Tate wouldn't harm Sophia by returning to Holly because she recognized herself in Sophia. Brady reprimanded Ava for her involvement in the teen drama and thought that Tate and Holly were no longer together. She was over-invested, Ava admitted. She implied that the teenagers were a diversion from her and Brady's own heartbreaking romantic relationships. Brady acknowledged that the stress-free banter between him and Ava had been pleasant and a pleasant diversion. Admired days, B&B, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on our SC forums. To interact with fans and start a conversation right away, click here. Holly hurriedly composed a text to Tate at the Kiriaki's home, but she chose not to send it. Greeting her granddaughter home, Maggie walked into the room. Maggie was happy that Holly had reconciled with Eric when she informed her that she had forgiven him. Holly prayed Tate would forgive her just as much. She told Maggie about her attempts to gather proof against Tate's father and her feelings of guilt. Maggie reminded Holly that Brady, Tate's father, had been prepared to accept responsibility for his alleged transgression and had done so in order to teach his kid a valuable lesson. Given that Holly had just learned of her father's passing, Maggie thought Tate would value her own admission of error and be willing to pardon her. Holly wasn't really sure, but after Maggie urged her to speak with Tate, she gave in. She wrote the text a few seconds before and sent it. Maggie praised Holly for having the guts to approach Tate. Maggie told her granddaughter to be patient after she saw Holly looking at her phone. Holly became agitated and demanded to meet Tate face to face. Maggie wished her luck as she departed. Sophia was taken by Tate to the home of John and Marlena. He said they had the apartment all to ourselves until he saw no one was home. The pair grinned together. After she hung up, Sophia contacted her mother and bemoaned her hovering behavior. She acknowledged lying to her mother about her relationship with Tate. Sophia brought up Tate's living space and expressed her admiration for the townhouse's allure. Tate once more expressed regret for misleading Sophia that evening when she revealed that she had attended prom there before. She sneakily said they would find a way for Tate to make amends and reassured him that she had forgiven him. Tate and Sophia later sat down to watch a peacock movie on the sofa. Tate was upset that the TV was not functioning. He proposed that they go to his room to watch the film. Holly's message to Tate appeared on his phone as they were leaving the main area, but he had forgotten it. Tate's bed was where Sophia and he lay. Sophia apologized for coming on so forcefully with Tate in the past while they watched the film. She revealed that she liked him so much that she didn't know how to behave around him. They started kissing when Tate declared that he too liked Sophia. When they heard a sound, they paused for a while, but Sophia jokingly said it was her heartbeat. With Sophia, Tate, Leo Howard, moved on from Holly, photo source, Peacock. With Sophia, Tate, Leo Howard, moved on from Holly, photo source, Peacock. 
After giving Tate another kiss, Sophia inquired whether he had a condom. He asked Sophia if she was certain after taking one from his nightstand drawer. As their kisses intensified, she nodded. Holly stopped rapping on the door outside and turned to go. When Chad entered the interview room at the police station, Kat was taken aback. Both of them said they needed to speak. Kat asked if she might go first as Chad sat down. She begged Chad to accept the idea that, despite her imperfections, her behavior had not been consistent with who she really was. She reiterated that she had been motivated by a desperate attempt to save her mother. Kat also reiterated that she had felt more guilty the longer she had known Chad. As she confessed how she had fallen for him, she became tearful. Then she stopped talking and said she was sorry for digressing. Chad claimed he had a question while glancing straight at her. He said, where is my wife? Chad said that he wanted to know where Abigail's body was since Kat was perplexed by the inquiry. Chad informed Kat that Abigail's body was missing from the casket and that her burial had been exhumed. Chad became enraged and scolded Kat for being in collusion with Clyde after she voiced her displeasure at Clyde's activities. Chad threw his hands on the table and insisted that she give him the location even though she said she was unable to respond to his query. Kat said that she was unaware of Abigail's disappearance. Chad furiously said that Kat was of no service to him and promised to ask Clyde questions. Kat reluctantly asked Chad if he would also ask Clyde where her mother's body was as he stood up to go. She thought the prisoner would have her mother killed since she and Mark had not complied with Clyde's demands. Chad rushed away after declaring he owed Kat nothing. Kat, alone herself, sobbed. Roman offered Kayla a cup of coffee and a sympathetic ear on the predicament with the Abigail imposter at the Brady pub. The siblings expressed sympathy for Jack and Jennifer's potential reactions to the disclosure. Although Kayla was glad that the doctor and his sister had been taken into custody, she couldn't believe she had trusted Mark. Chad would never want to associate with the fake again, Roman was sure of it. After a while, Steve joined Kayla and Roman and kissed the latter. He shared his opinions on the events in Paris, but he also mentioned that the experience had yielded some positive results, particularly with reference to the imposter's mother. After that, Steve informed Kayla and an unconvinced Roman that the mother was actually the supposed deceased Katharina. Steve said that he was unaware of Katharina's whereabouts and if she was still alive. Steve clarified that he had communicated with Clyde's guards in order to prevent Clyde from ordering his goons to kill. At that moment, the jail called him. Roman and Kayla were worried by Steve's abrupt fury with the caller. Steve scolded the warden and hung up, then declared that Clyde had gotten out of jail once more.